the most, yes. as he's going to be able to really utilize his, his multitasking, his huge APM. I think it's going to be very beneficial to him, and we're going to see how he's going to be able to do. That is where his speed will come in. Now, in the middle left portion of the map, as the green Zerg, we do have six Jax Vibe morphing in. And in the middle right side of the map, we do have Liquid TLO. Indeed, so they are going to spawn in cross positions. This is really nice for the Zerg. Again, you want to go into that huge macro game, I, I would feel, for Vive. Vive really is looking to that, where he can really utilize his huge APM. And I think we're going to see uh, a, a game that's going to be more suited towards that, since we are in cross positions. Yeah, with the bigger map, he's definitely going to be able to let his hair down, so to speak. Um and really just kind of expand with his speed and, and gameplay. I mean, that's where the multitasking comes in comes in handy. Now, tell me a little bit about TLO. You are a Terran player, Gritorp, and his Terran, it, you know, it's unorthodox for sure. Um, but what kind of stuff does this map offer? Like, I, I see the double expansions. Yeah. I know that a planetary fortress right smack dab in the middle map, very powerful, but in this matchup in particular, what do you think you can expect from TLO? Well, generally how Terrans like to play this map is you go very defensive on three base. You can grab your natural very easily we can see the naturals right here and then just a little bit up we can get the third now getting those three base you can get a lot of defensive units and because you get it so fast you have such a booming economy with that you just do a small push out and take your fourth over here and you just play a straight up macro game you can just do these huge Ooh. pushes to all these directions command center first command center first DLO are you gonna do it yes we have a command center first. Both players are opting for their secondary town hall structure, if you will. A little bit of a throwback town hall. For those of you who are not aware, that is... That's Warcraft. Yeah, that's right. I played other games with Starcraft. Uh, spawning pool is going down for the Zerg player. Pretty basic. I mean, nothing nothing flashy here just yet. I mean, the uh, the command center first would be considered unorthodox or flashy, except that on Terminus Re, again... With those double expansions and the map being as large as it is, that can almost be considered standard play. Um, yeah. In fact, you'll see a lot more Zerg cheese on this map, if not macro play, because they're counting on their Terran uh, opponent to do stuff like that. Now, double barracks does go down at this choke point. A third barracks would completely block that off. I doubt we'll see a third one this fast. Probably just going to rely on the first two to kind of hold it down. Indeed, and Liquid TLO is going to be able to scout out Vibe. Vibe, we can see, has not thrown down any gas, and that might be a little bit indicative of a, a much stronger drone pump in this beginning. So Vibe really to taking looks to be oh, taking SCB. a huge... And the first casualty, sorry to cut you off there, he tore up this drone, putting his uh, Mel Gibson hat on just a little bit, kind of taking on the Empire. Marine will come out, though, and it will be thwarted, but uh, a little bit of a misstep by TLO there. DTL just going to lose the first SCV, not going to be too detrimental, but of course any advantage that Vive wa is, can get, he's going to go ahead and take. Now first Marine is out, going to be able to kill off this drone pretty easily. Yes, the drone does go down. Yep, and spine crawler down for the Zerg player. Kind of interesting, I think that's a little bit, a little bit fast. I mean, he knows there's only one Marine out. I guess he's just getting it out because he wants to drone pretty hard right now. Yeah. He doesn't want to worry about the Indeed. timing of it later. I, I'm just kind of used to the Brood War pro pros of the old days, like really waiting to the last possible moment to make it. But we can go ahead and put down a creep team. A couple links are going to make their way out here. This is really important because it's such a large map and because the Zelnaga Towers are so important in the middle of the map. They reveal so much in terms of the, the space between the two bases. You really want to have control of them fast. And that's actually something TLO is already doing, nabbing that, I guess we call it the top left Zelnaga Tower. Spotting these couple of Zerglings make their way out. And that's why these Marines are going to meet them in the middle. And, okay, a little bit of a contact. One Ling does go down, the other one's injured. Uh, again, not that big of a deal, but really nice from TLO to kind of thwart that information and at least create the uh, yeah. the idea that he's being aggressive here. Indeed, and what I really like right now from Vibe, he's taking an expansion right now. That is an extremely fast third. Yeah. Doing it off of Hatchery Tech, just now getting the Roaches worn, so he's going to be able to, to brush away a lot of this uh. early game pressure. You can see Marines trying to snipe in here a little bit, but this spine crawler is going to force all those five Marines away very easily. Yep, and the factory does go down for TLO. It is actually completing the wall alongside the double barracks. Um, and that is actually the second factory, so it's going to finish after the one inside his main. I like this from TLO, though. So starting the wall with those barracks, at least 
putting forward the idea and concept that he's doing kind of a bio opening, and then following it up with pretty heavy mech play. For, I mean, the, the double factor at least suggests that there will be a strong mech presence at least here uh, in the next few moments. We do have a Hellion being produced off that first factory. Uh, I can only assume that, yep, there we go, second Hellion is constructed as well on the second factory. Um, still no third command center. That's something that a lot of Terrans like to do. They are fairly safe behind that wall. We do have an armory going down. Now, is that for upgrades or Thors, do you think? It's most likely going to be for Thors. Again, Thors are such a strong defensive unit. It's going to be able to lock down a lot of position. And then now, Liquid TLO does look like he's, he's going to push out way. with a couple of Hellions and a group of Marines. This is a lot of Marines, actually. There are a total of 11 Marines in this group. Oh, the Roaches are out on the field. does go down. Kill one of these Hellions. Really nice play from Vibe. Just getting these Hellions out really early. Oh... And a little bit of lag from TLO is going to come in. German efficiency... Help us now. Um, but that Hellion in front of the, the, the Marine Force, I think that's a little bit of a misstep. you got to know creeps there. So you got to know that the Hellion is yeah. going to be seen. Um, we're just kind of waiting for TLO to connect here. Actually, quite a bit of bad lag. So hopefully this doesn't continue to get worse. Nice pause from Vibe. Let that lag kind of settle. And we'll get right back to the game here in a moment, folks. We're going to wait for Battle.net to kind of readjust itself. Right now, I imagine it's uh, fixing its jacket. Straightening its hair, it's uh, it's got a little smudge on the side of its cheek, perhaps. So, I mean, right now, right now it's a, a little bit of a easy position. There, there isn't too much going on. There's a little bit of pressure, but I think those roaches are going to be able to lock down a lot of that position. Here we go back, back into the game. game. That so we can see. Though, I actually think the roaches are going to be quite yep. powerful. And another pause from Six Jacks Five. So actually, in that re in that pause, his uh, hotkeys reset, so he's actually probably going to take a moment here to go ahead and set them back. Um, but let's go ahead and get inside the game just a little bit. I feel like TLO's push is really strong on a smaller map, because it's going to get there a lot yeah. faster. And he saw the spine crawler, so, I mean, we're not going to be criticizing TLO just yet, because I feel like it's more of like a posturing thing. Like, yeah. he, you know, like, Vibe has no idea what's coming up behind it, so he's got to exactly. maybe throw more down. Um, but I really like the Thor follow-up, because when you open up Roach, it's good against everything but Thor. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he's going to be in some trouble if that, if that gets going. I mean, Thors do extremely well against everything. Here we go, back into the game. As I was saying, Thors do extremely well defensively. Locks down position. Yeah. You really cannot bust that unless you have a ton of units, just because SCVs can go ahead and repair. So, uh, as you said, I think these Hellions and Marines are just going to be posturing. This is exactly what he needs to do. This is just going to say, hey, do not drone pump so much, because now I'm going to threaten you All with those a lot of these do units. Go down. Uh, I guess you can call them scouting zerglings because they certainly didn't have any kind of aggressive bone in their body. Hellions torched them for very little cost to them, about 15 damage to one Hellion. Now here's that thing we were talking about, I think TLO is just setting up with a couple of creeps where going to be under siege. Roach is moving out to disrupt the party, but TLO just runs right past them. He's going for the ramp, a couple of Hellions meet him there and he's just taken oh too much man. damage, so all the Hellions will perish before making their journey into that zerg base and the Marines are left alone outside, probably to return home. Now look at this, a fast infestation pit, and we do have the pathogen glands going down. This is something we talked about in our pregame show about Vibe. He is a big infester lover. Yeah, definitely. Infestors have been buffed in the most recent patch, so they are super strong right now. It's going to be really nice to be throwing down these infestors since you have tons of room. The spacing between each of your bases is so huge. So to be able to have so much time for that investor play, it's going to be really nice. He has that time to get all that energy, and not only that, he can go ahead and fungal for a long period of time. Yes, so now just kind of return to the layout of what's going on here. TLO is pumping out those Thors quite readily. Uh, the third command center has gone down at the third base. Now on this version of Terminus, there is no back to struck for rocks, so this base is pretty dang safe from land uh, base attacks. So that's why we're going to see an orbital command there, not a planetary fortress or anything like that. Um, we do have several more factories going down, so it is up, up to a total of, it looks like, three in operation right now. Mm -hmm. But a fourth one, nope, that's actually, actually it's a barracks. He's going to make some uh, bio in with these Thors, and we do have quite a large marine force actually yeah. touching down here. Um, so it looks like it's going to be Thor, Marine, and actually a couple of tanks moving out. So I really like this play. I think the Thors take care of kind of air threats. Um, obviously the bio allows for a lot of options against, uh, as well as long as you micro them well. I mean, it mm -hmm. forces Banelings. If you don't make Banelings against that, well, I guess the Infestor okay. A little bit of Ling tickling going out at the front of the wall. 
Um, this is just that 500 APM kicking in here, ladies and gentlemen. Like, he can actually do that, and with his toes, he's macroing right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what it's going to come down to is how good is is Vibe's investor play. If he can get good fungal growths and be able to isolate those marines and stop the marine Thor, there is going to be tanks, however. It does look like you know TLO what? is including there. I think he's switching to Ling investor entirely. Yeah. Um, I don't see more roaches coming out. He is actually getting the Neural Parasite as well. That's kind of cool. And the Nidus Worm. A couple of big upgrades there. But if you look at his uh, Roach upgrades, they're non-existent. So I think those were just for the Hellions. Yep. Yep. And right now it's all Roach Ling. Or, excuse me, Ling Infestor. Yeah, Ling Infestor is pretty standard. This is going to allow him to get a lot of Infestors up. We can also see Evolution Chambers are being upgraded. The plus one, one, one for melee attack yeah. for the Zerglings and also the one for Carapus. That's going to be upgraded. Again, a lot of gas is freed up by not going those game lanes. And we've been seeing this type of style a lot more. Now going to be throwing down these rocks. And it looks like Vibe is geared up to expand yet again. Yeah, it's going to take its fourth base in that middle area. A little bit of a push out, making sure to secure these towers. Uh, TL has the same idea. Ling's moving in for the surround. Could be donating some Ling's here. And the Hellions and Ling's will go down at a relatively low cost. The Ling's are pretty disposable. Uh... Nice little exchange for Vibe. Now, here's what I like that's shaping up here. Um, the mobility and speed of Vibe's army mixed with the Nidus Worm yeah. is a strong counter to Mech. Now, hold that thought. Nidus Worm back in the Terran base, but I think it's going to go down. Yes. Only a couple of Lings get in. The, the health of the Nidus Worm is so <laughs> low. Yeah. Indeed, and we can see Infestors and Zerglings with a couple of Roaches are going to go in the middle of the map, just going to try to posture and get a little bit of position. Again, you don't want to be giving Terran nice worm. free... Top left. Tilo is not worm. responding. Is it going to be scouted out? Meanwhile, there is a little bit of engagement in the front. Going to be taking two of the tanks now. Neural Parasites. Oh my gosh, really nice for Neural Parasites going off. But oh, all the Infestors get hit! And wow. a lot of them are going to go down. And there's nothing coming out of that Nidus Worm, so a little bit of a missed opportunity. They will come out now, but I would have loved to have seen it come out at the same time. TLO is under siege. The mobility of his army is going to be holding him back and restricting him just a little bit. It's Pure Ling's coming out right now. Ooh, and in the main, too, there's another Nidus Worm going to be showing up. There are Marines just around the corner, and they just start attacking the Nidus Worm. So Vibe just macroing and microing all over the place, multitasking. Pushing them to the limits, and but there are no oh units Oh, it does go down. The other one does as well, so... Slight macro harass, but I gotta tell you what, TLO held all three of those attacks yeah. brilliantly. The one in the main base, of course, never came to fruition, and the one in the back of TLO's base, I mean, he pulled the SVs immediately. Very low cost to him. Now, here's what, what Vibe has going for him, though. We do have huge upgrades going. That Ultralist upgrade for the Carapace is going down now. Very powerful unit. Yeah. Um, but his units are relatively inexpensive. I mean, yes, the Infestors cost 200 gas, but when you're not spending that on anything else, you can make a lot of those. I couldn't agree more. And, you know, he does have a huge buildup of gas from just going this mass zergling. And he does have a lot of Infestors, though, however. And the Infestors do look like they want to push out into position. Oh, one huge, huge fungal growth is going to go off. A second one goes off. Going to be able to kill uh, a good bunch of Marines, but I don't know. I mean, he still has all those tanks and Thors to deal with. That is a lot of units for Vibe to be able to kill, so these Ultralisks need to do a ton of damage to be able to break that position. And yeah, that nice network is just tucked in there near the natural. Overlords are moving into, like, almost like sharks in the water outside of Telos base, looking for a niche or a spot to lay down that lay down that groundwork for the Nidus Worm. Uh, but you know what? It's been, that Hoon's been, that four, excuse me, it's been two to three times. I feel like TLO is going to be all over it. That's why they was, we're seeing some Marines around the perimeter. Ooh, loading up for a drop. I do like the Ghost play, though. Look at this. Ghost Academy down for the Terran player. Very good against the Festers. Indeed, you need to get the Ghosts out. They're really important. I love this TLO actually making three command centers. Now, he can do a couple of things with this. One of the biggest things with Terminus Re is that you can be counterattacked uh, when defending this outwards expansion over here. So getting these three command centers, I mean, I don't know if he's going to be using any of them for, for uh, Planetary Fortress just yet, but he definitely could be. And meanwhile, there are some drops going on in the bottom middle position. There is a Marine drop going down to this bottom base. Does look like it's going to be able to... Oh, he oh. just picks him up again. And to drop him back down again. It's like a little bit of a... It's almost the Quiet Rice Depot bench press, if you will. Uh, another Nidus Worm going down. Oh my gosh, Retorp. This one oh could go right under no. TLO's nose. 
It will Doesn't complete. This it. will finish. Doesn't see it. Nothing moving over there. The drop has not happened.